just come back uh, a few months ago from a visit to Nicaragua and I brought with me some uh, copies of a newspaper you get down there. You hear a lot about the press in Nicaragua and the struggles going on. You don't hear a lot about El Tayacan and I want to talk about it today. If you take uh, one look at El Tayacan, you can see right away that it's definitely not the New York Times or the San Diego Union and you can tell this even if you go beyond the fact that it's in Spanish which is the first way you tell a difference but it also says underneath the uh, the title the word Tayacan by the way is the name of a tree indigenous to the um, wilds of Nicaragua. It's a very, very strong, kind of gigantic, massive oak-like tree. And the tree symbolizes strength and deep-rootedness. And underneath it, it says Periodico Popular, People's Newspaper. Every newspaper expresses a particular kind of project, the interests of a particular group, and a particular social vision. The idea that a newspaper could just be neutral or refract the news as if it were a pane of glass is, is, is nonsense. So the New York Times or the San Diego Union reflects the interests of the, the people who own it, and the people who administer this society. El Taya Khan uh, reflects the interests of not just the ordinary people of Nicaragua, although I think they do that too, but very particularly a, a community of religious people in Nicaragua that's sometimes called the Church of the Poor or the People's Church or the Liberation Church. And it's a weekly newspaper that expresses, it's the organ or instrument of that church and its relationship to the people of Nicaragua and to the struggles to which the people of Nicaragua are going. And this is very interesting too because we're accustomed to uh, being made to think of the struggle in Nicaragua as between something called communism and something called freedom and we uh, hear a lot about the uh, <coughs> Catholic Church being opposed to the government or uh, that the Cardinal of Managua, our, our Archbishop Miguel Obando de Bravo is the, gov the government's most active critic, or that uh, Bishop uh, Pablo Vega of Uigalpa was expelled from the country in, in, uh, in the July of this year. So that we have set up in our minds the idea that there's a basic conflict going on between the church in Nicaragua, which is being repressed, and the government, which is uh, repressing it. But if you go to a a service of the uh, uh, of the sort that El Tayacan represents, and there are n many of them going on in in, uh, in Managua and throughout Nicaragua. You'll hear frequently a, a, a slogan chanted, which is uh, "Antra Cristianismo y Revolución no hay contradicción." Between Christianity and revolution, there is no contradiction, and this is uh, basically what El Tayacan believes that it's possible to have a a, 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 a revolutionary Christianity or a revolution that is Christian in its orientation and a Christianity that's revolutionary in its orientation. And this is a, quite an amazing thing to go on in the world today and, and it really deserves our attention. I must say that I have the deepest admiration 
for El Taya Khan, not necessarily because of its uh, ideological orientation, but actually for the kind of job that it does in, in, in representing the needs and the, the interests of the ordinary people. This really is journalism from the uh, ground up. The people in the, in the religious communities help make it, they help distribute it, they contribute to it, and it is very, very closely attuned to the ordinary life of the people, to their, to their daily life. I mean, this is, it's a weekly, and here's a, a headline from this June, and it just shows uh, a happy child, and the, the words Yahweve means, uh, basically, essentially means that the rains have come. And this is a big event for the people there because it signifies the end of the dry season and the beginning of the time when they can grow their crops. And then it, here it talks about the Cabildos Abierto, the open town meetings where the people are going to try to determine their uh, constitution. And then it has a religious article, the Eucharist, the, the meal of the brothers. And inside there are many... Uh, cartoons and sort of a summary of the week's news, uh, questions, this questions about the Cabildo Abierto with a lot of uh, cartoon figures. And then they have this really remarkable thing called a photo novella, which uh, is an inspired use of uh, popular culture to make a political point and, and to, and to I think, be of real use and service. And the, to say that these are popular, that the, that the photo novella is, is, a, is a popular form, is, is by no means to, uh, uh, to put it down. I mean, we think of popular culture as something that's sort of low-level or illiterate, but the, the photo novellas of El Taya Khan are anything, anything but that. They, uh, they're very, very sensitive. They're very artistically done. This is one, and, and they're, they're even tragic at times. This is one for La Mala Ora. This is from uh, the 30th of May this year. And it's about a woman who's uh, worrying about her son who's at the front uh, fighting the Contras sent down by the uh, United States government. And she hears the news and hears a rumor that her son has been, has been killed at the front. And uh, she goes into a uh, really a terrible state where she experiences her isolation and, and the fear that the son, who's basically her only living relative, is going to be taken from her by this horrible war. And she broods and she, she uh, despairs. And the photo novella is about the efforts of some people in her neighborhood to try to help her. It, it has flashbacks of her and her son. You can see that they have uh, actors who are posing for these, and then they have the usual balloons and the, uh, the, the commentary. So she's dreaming of her son, and, and, and here's a neighbor who's younger who, who tells her uh, not to despair, that, that people are, are, are with her, that nobody is really alone in the revolutionary process. But what strikes me about this, this particular photo novella is the fact that the, that the woman doubts this, that, she, that, that the, the photo novella is very honest. It shows her in, in, the, in the desperation of her loneliness. And, and um, she says here, my pain is, is only mine. My pain is only mine. And she really refuses to accept the consolation. So this is, in a way, true to life, where people aren't always cheered up. And even the, though the, at the end there's a kind of a happy ending, her son does come back, the rumor was false, uh, she is reunited, and uh, he hugs her and says, Happy day, Mama. Uh, it's plain that the, the, the photo novella shows uh, in a context, a very religious context, here's somebody who can no longer believe and is actually broken out of the reassurances of the church and shows people, uh, in effect, just how uh, desperate their situation, uh, you know, really, really can be. Of course, not all the photo novellas are gloomy like that. Some of them are very happy. Some of them are about 
sowing the ground. They're, they're all very closely related to the everyday life of the people. This is one uh, about abortion. Uh, this shows a, uh, a beautiful young woman said, I'll go sobre el aborto, something about abortion. Uh, and in this, the, the people of El Tayacan, although remaining intensely and, and devoutly uh, Catholic, go to the point of saying that abortion is always an evil, that it's always a very bad thing, but we have to put people into the position of being able to choose, that we have to give people the strength and the opportunity to make this choice, and we need to educate them so the choice may never have to be made. But it accepts basically, again, a kind of a, a tragic implication, and a one that, needless to say, that is drastically at variance with the position of the Catholic uh, hierarchy. And uh, when we come back, I'll say a little bit more about these institutions and uh, some of the struggles between them. But I'd like to just uh, conclude with uh, two, uh, this portion with a couple of little sayings that they have at the upper left-hand corner. They call it Sabaduria del Pueblo, the wisdom of the people. And each week they have a different saying, and both of these are sayings from priests who have fallen in the struggle against uh, fascism and dictatorship. And the first is from a Father Hector Gallego, and I'll translate it. It says, if I disappear, don't look for me, continue the struggle. And this is one from Father Gaspar Garcia Laviana, who says, uh, humanism is love without egotism, to care, to love the other as you would love yourself. In other words, the message, the Christian message of selflessness, the message of dedication, but turn to a, a revolutionary project. And Father Gaspar was a Spanish priest who joined the revolution, actually took up arms in the defense of the people, and uh, died in that struggle. Father Gallego was uh, an advocate of the people who was killed by... Uh, by fascism, as many priests have. So El Tayacan is deadly serious, but it also has its lighter moments, and it's very much in touch with the everyday life of the people. So that's all for the news that El Tayacan has fit to print for now, and we'll return in a little while and talk some about the background. Mario, the Reform Contra. The Contra came to town one night and assassinated various peasants. They also killed Pancho. Pancho was the older brother of Marina and Chepito. They cried a lot for him. One year after those murders... Marina, do you know that Mario came back? He and four other bums, they said because of the amnesty. Chepito, what's that to me? Mario used to be your boyfriend. Well, that's all over now. He's a contra. And those sons of <coughs> hmm, killed our Pancho. Have you forgotten that already? Well, I want to go and see him even if he's a contra. i never seen a contra. Fine. Be a little fool and run off and see that bum. But beware of mentioning me. For he, for me, he's dead. Do you hear me, you lazy kid? A few days later, Chepito looked for Mario. Hey, you little bandit. You're much taller. You've grown a lot. Of course. It's been more than a year since you left. And your sister, Marina? How is she? Well, why did he go with the Contra, Mario? Why? That day, Chepito spent a long time talking to Mario. Look, Maria, he's really sorry. Those contras did some nasty things to him. He says that he really didn't kill anyone, neither Pancho nor anyone else. Nobody. You have to forgive him. Look at you. That jerk's already convinced you. And you know what, sis? He still loves you. He asks all about you. If you got married, how you were, how pretty you were. Hush, fool. That hurts me. 
Chipito continued to talk to Mario. Only you come to talk to me this calmly. Some people are afraid of you. I I know the Contras are spreading fear. Before, when I was a brute, people always feared me. I don't fear you now, Mario. But that's because you knew me before, because your sister Marina... Right, I could have been your brother-in-law. But, but now, look, Marina won't pardon you. Because those Contras you were with kill our brother. I know, I know too well. Those Contras are assassins. I was really a beast to people. You have forgiven me coming every day to chat like this. But she, she left me when Pancho was killed. Forgiveness is difficult for me, I mean. The struggles of the church on behalf of the oppressed people of Nicaragua go back a very long time. In fact, right to the beginning of the Spanish conquest. There's a, a center in, in Managua named after uh, Father Antonio Valdivieso, who was uh, martyred and killed in, in the 16th century for his activities on behalf of the Indians who were being oppressed by the conquistadores. And uh, so this is a very long tradition, and it's was a kind of a complex past, but the actual people's church that gives birth to a journal like El Tayacan began only 20 years ago in 1966 as an uh, offshoot of the transformation of the Catholic Church following Vatican II and the path-breaking work of uh, Pope John XXIII. It was an attempt to open up the uh, ministry to popular participation to reach out to the masses of urban poor particularly in Latin America and in the uh, and the campesinos the peasantry who had previously been out pretty much out of it as far as the church was concerned the church was an institution that that rested upon and served the interests of the wealthy the property holding classes was a pillar of a repressive and uh, highly stratified society. But there was always this tradition of the popular base. And that tradition began to take root again in, in, in 66. And there was a, a parish formed in, in Managua at that point called San Pablo Apostolo, St. Paul the Apostle. And um, the later, uh, the more famous um, uh, base, these are called base Christian based communities, I should say. And later, the more famous one of Solentaname, the island in Lake de Nicaragua, was founded by Father Ernesto Cardinal, who is now the Minister of Culture and a famous poet. And uh, you can read about that in a book called uh, The Gospel of Solentaname and much else. And they played a very important role in the revolution. What happened with these base communities were they first they just became ways that people could do their own uh, uh, theology, as it were. They could reflect on the Bible. But uh, once you give people the opening, they're going to start thinking intelligently about the sources of their misery and oppression. And some of them are going to draw the conclusion that it lays in the structures of society and that they have a chance to change that. And they're also going to find out that the, that the Christian religion itself has a, has a very deep, profound tradition having to 
do with what's called good news for the poor, and that Christ was basically a, uh, somebody who addressed himself uh, to the poor and made a harsh critique of uh, wealth and the establishment. So all this gets uh, picked up once the, uh, the door is open to that kind of theolo theologization. And these, these base communities played a significant role in the, in the Nicaraguan revolutionary process, both in Solentanami and also in the urban barrios of Managua and other cities, Esteli, Matagalpa. In the eastern barrios of Managua, the, uh, the churches contributed a lot of, uh, of uh, support to the revolution and uh, the churches of the poor. Uh, there also was some uh, resistance to Somoza, the then dictator, on the part of the Catholic hierarchy because what you had is a situation where Somoza was so rotten and awful that he turned the whole country against him, including the wealthy and property classes. And the Catholic hierarchy, headed by Abando Bravo, attempted to control this process to keep it in a kind of a, kind of a safe uh, boundary to keep it from obtaining revolutionary proportions. And you got this split within the church even before the triumph of the revolution. I was fortunate enough to be part of the 20th birthday celebration of the, of the base community of the Paris of San, Saint Paul the Apostle. And this is the uh, copy of El Taya Khan which uh, commemorates that. There's no photo novella in it. The whole uh, <coughs> issue is devoted to the history of that base community which is, as I said, the oldest in Nicaragua and, and the second oldest in, in Latin America. Quite a new phenomenon. Here, the Sabaduria del Pueblo is from Acts in the Bible. It says, Todos los creyentes vivían unidos y compartían cuanto tenían. They all lived united and shared as much as they had. In other words, the ideal of primitive communism that exists in the, in the Bible and the origins of the church in which these people are, are striving to return to. This little humble structure here, I don't know if you can make it out, is a picture of the actual church. It's a, it's a real plain church, believe me. There's the only iconography that they have there are the images of the various martyrs from the community who gave their life for the revolution. And the, uh, the, the issue goes through the, the history of that, uh, that development. I think there was an image you showed before of, uh, of the... Um, this is, this is the people in the community in a process of conscientization. In other words, it started a theological reflection and then it started getting like politically serious, you know, and they wanted to take on the establishment. So they were, they were occupying the cathedral of, of Granada. And this was the Padre Felix Jimenez, who was one of the founders of the, uh, uh, from, from the Catholic hierarchy side. He later uh, has left the church I, uh, because he got married. You know, he couldn't take the celibacy thing. But he didn't leave the uh, base community. When I attended the, um, the 20th anniversary, which was a really a very touching and moving, a highly festive event with a lot of songs and chants and so on, when uh, Felix Jimenez was, was brought up, uh, they said he's in the audience, they cheered for, oh, 10 or 15 minutes. They, they, uh, what really strikes you so much about about the church there is not its size. I mean, you have to emphasize that this is a sm rather s small group. The Catholic hierarchy is tremendously opposed to these people and regard them uh, as uh, a real threat. Uh, the Pope is kind of ambivalent. He has to let them, give them some space, but he would like very much, he wished they would go away or at least tame themselves. But the Archbishop Abando and the Cardinal Abando y Bravo is, is deeply opposed to them. They invited him to their birthday celebration and he, you know, he just didn't even answer. He didn't show up at all. Didn't give him the time of day. And uh, he's sort of intimidating a lot of people from having to do with this church. So if you join this church, if you play a, a role in it, you're breaking. You're breaking with the Catholic hierarchy. On the other hand, you're very much on the side of the revolutionary process. And so the government is very supportive and probably the leading member of that whole movement is the foreign minister, uh, another Miguel, Miguel de Scoto, who was a Merino uh, priest who has been basically had to step down because of his, uh, his uh, advocacy of, the, of uh, the revolution. You know, they believed 
that religion and politics don't mix, although religion and politics have in fact mixed since the beginning of religion and the beginning of politics. So uh, the, the People's Church is a way of bringing together a lot of, of groups from the, from the very base of society, uh, groups that have to do with uh, uh, the, the elites or, or many Jesuits, some of them North Americans are down there. People come from all around the world to share in this process. So it's extremely exciting to be there that uh, at, at this time particularly, uh, the, 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 the two posters we have, I don't know if you've seen them, one is, uh, shows the birthday celebration of this church, another shows the great fast that the foreign minister, Descoto, had uh, last year. A poster that says, Ayuno, and uh, get the Ayuno poster <laughs> if you can. It would be nice to uh, see that because that's another symbolic process. What the, the feeling you get in being down there is that you're part of an almost like a medieval in, uh, uh, situation in its intensity, its pageantry, and in the feeling that uh, really for the first time in world history uh, a, 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 a modern revolutionary process is joining hands with a transformation in theology. So this is really an exciting thing to be part of and to study and this little humble newspaper at al Khan. I think sums it up and expresses it most well. Okay. Thank you. Good night or good day. Mm -hmm.